So hello everyone, uh, I'm Cristian López, Peñasquito on Drupal.org and this is about how to make your entities and field translatable with Drupal 8. So I work for Lingotech, which is a company which provides uh, translation services uh, so you can uh, translate your content in different CMS including Drupal and Drupal 8. And I, so I, I've been uh, contributing to Drupal 8 since I think Drupal Dev Days Barcelona. So Drupal Dev Days is a very good place for starting contributing, so I hope to see you around in the sprints. And mostly I've been working on the multilingual initiative, uh, and this is where I did most of the, of the work I did in core. So today I want to cover an introduction to the Entity API. Uh, and then we will, we will see how to write our cu custom entities and uh, then how to make them translatable. Uh, we will do the same with fields, like we will see uh, how uh, you can write your fields and how to, to make them translatable. We will see how to translate your config entities. And then I'll show up how the, how the entity API and all the uh, APIs that we have in Drupal 8 core now uh, allows to, to integrate with uh, other uh, services or how you can build on top of that so you can uh, play with your, with your data. So first, uh, how many of you have been building multilingual Drupal 7 sites? Yeah, a lot of, half of the room <coughs> raised his hands. So if you remember in Drupal 7, uh, you have like a very uh, diverse uh, options for doing your site multilingual. So you have your, you want to translate your nodes and then you can use uh, the content translation module or the entity translation module, which uh, one of them makes a copy of your nodes for its language and the other one translate the fields. Uh, then if you, the title is not a regular field in Drupal 7, so if you want to translate your title, you need the title module. Uh, for taxonomies, you have the entity translation, or you can use the i18n uh, suite. So there are a lot of choices, and in some cases, one of these choices is better than the other one, and you you can have like a a very big uh, a, a a lot of uh, possibilities that can make your site really complex. So this is something that change. Uh, uh, a lot in Drupal 8, like we have native support in core for all, for all of this. And this is thanks to a lot of people and, and the, the multilingual initiative that uh, like thousands of people have been contributing, uh, led by Gabor Hoitzi. So please uh, give them their, your thanks if you find them around. So now in Drupal 8, we have uh, four different uh, subsystems that make this work. So we have the language uh, module, which uh, provides uh, services for uh, assigning language to your data. Uh, it's not only about multilingual, like you can have an English site, but you may want to create uh, files in different languages, and you are assigning them to an entity, and you may want to have a uh, the language of this data associated with your site, even if your site is a monolingual English site. So this in Drupal 7 was tied to the interface translation, now it's a different thing. We have the interface translation module, which allows you to, to translate your strings, like your user interface, and it allows you to download translations automatically from, Drupal, from localized Drupal.org. Uh, and it improved the, the, the usability a lot. Then you have uh, content uh, translation, which uh, in Drupal 7 we had these uh, two different options, like you can copy your nodes for each language and have them uh, associated by, uh, by but having two different nodes. And in Drupal, and you had the entity translation, which was field-based translation. In Drupal 8, we have only one, which you may think that it's based on field translation. Uh, so all your data 
on all your languages is going to be in a single uh, entity. And this module provides the interface for translating your content in, in Drupal. And then we have the config uh, translation module, which is a new solution. Like we used to have uh, in Drupal 7, we have the variable set and variable get. Um, you, you had uh, like really simple structures and in, in Drupal 8 we have a new thing that is the config entities and uh, you can also translate those. So if you have a view, you may want to translate it because you want to uh, have a, a different header, a different footer or you want to translate your pager, whatever. So now you can do that. So if you went yesterday to Gabor Hoitzi uh, session on uh, the translation APIs, he covered uh, the four uh, modules and uh, how you can use their APIs to integrate with that. Uh, so what I'm doing here is like I'm going a bit deeper about the content translation and the config translation uh, APIs. So first thing I want to show is how to write your, your entities. Uh, this uh, part of the talk is based on a, a training I did with Tobias Stockler and Jan Stockler in DrupalCon uh, New Orleans. And if you go to this URL uh, in GitHub, we have uh, like uh, the, the source code that we use for, for showing Trainees, uh, how to write your entities, and we have like a guide, step by step, or, or uh, how to do this. So maybe I'm going fast here because I want to show a bit, uh, a couple of of things. But if you really want to go deeper into that, I think that's uh, good uh, material to to read. So in Drupal 8. You want to, to save your data, and for that you probably want to use content entities, if this data is your content. And how you write your first entity? H how many of you have played with Entity API in Drupal 8? Yes, for five, six uh, hands raised. So in, in Drupal 8, we have plugins, and, uh, and we have uh, entities, and we have several APIs that are, what they use is annotations. Annotations are comments that are somehow describing uh, how your code uh, relates to the rest of the code. And in this case, if you, this is the simplest uh, entity you can write. We are creating an event, so we want to save data about the, the different events that happens in the Drupal uh, in Drupal land. So you need to create a class and extend from content entity base, which provides uh, an ID and the, the methods for storage and loading data. And then you need to add an annotation, which is the content entity type. You give an ID to your entity, a label, so you see uh, the name of, uh, of your thingy in a user-friendly way, and you say in which table you want to save it and the entity keys that you will uh, use for identifying your data, which uh, usually they are the ID and the UUID. So this is the simplest entity you can write. And with this, you can load an event, and you can save an event, and you can do whatever you want with an event. But there's nothing really, there's no data there that you can use for anything. So then, uh, next thing is saying which uh, fields will your entities have. And for that, you have the base field definitions uh, method, where you define your base fields, which will be in any uh, kind of entity that you have. So in this case, we want to have a title, which will be the label of our event, the date of our event, which uh, will be a date time. And we will only save the date that we are, uh, only the date of the event and the description, which be, will be like a body field. Where we save. If we return uh, these fields, we already have a, our entity. When we can assign our title, we can assign a date, we can save the description, and we can load them and save them or anything. So uh, then you need to make uh, your entity know that 
uh, when you display an entity, what you want to display is the title of the entity. So you have the entity key label, and then you say that you are using the title, and that's it. And then uh, we can create our data, we can load it, we can uh, save it, but we want to, to show it on, on our page. So next step uh, would be creating a, a link, which is called the canonical link. It's where uh, we can visit our entity. Then we need the permissions for who will be able of creating uh, events. And for that, we need to add a permission in the YAML file, which I won't cover here. And then you, can, you just uh, say which uh, permission you are using. And then we have to write our handlers. There are some uh, helpful uh, classes in Drupal core that you can use. And if you want to cost customize how you want to see your entities or whatever, you can extend from it and uh, play and, and extend the functionality of there. But in most cases, you maybe uh, will be fine with using the, the classes provided by core. So here, we need to specify the view builder that will know how to display your entity. And there's an entity view builder class in Drupal core. And we need to define uh, how we are going to see our, our routes for, for uh, viewing and editing and deleting our events. So you want to use the default HTML route provider. So now we have uh, entities that we can view, we can delete, we can edit. And we want to customize how we view them. So for that, in our base field definitions method, we can set the, the display options of uh, any of our base fields. And then you can say, uh, we want to view uh, our dates with the label in line. So we want to see the date and the value of the date in the same line. And we want to show this uh, first and then the description. So we, we, uh, you, we use the weight for that. And here you can customize how, how you will view uh, your entities. You will need a, tem a template to create a template uh, with Tweak. Uh, this is uh, the, the base template uh, provided by Core that you may want to, to override or not, but you can customize uh, everything on the interface. So probably you'll be fine with this uh, in most cases. And it's just showing a div with the attributes and then displaying all the content. And how we display the content is something that we can configure later. And with that, we can, st we can store data with the API. We can load it. We can view it on our Drupal site. So next thing, we'll be creating forms for, for editing them and creating them on the site itself. So for that, we have a form key on our handlers uh, section. And then we specify which, uh, which form we want to use, which class we, wa we want to use for providing the form for adding, editing, or deleting our content. And as we said uh, with the list builders, with the view builders, we have, uh, we have classes in core that provide uh, a base function, a basic functionality for that, that we can extend. So in this case, we are using the content entity form class from core. And we need to associate this with the, with the URLs, with the routes that we want to use for seeing these uh, forms. So we have in the link section to uh, create an add form, edit form, and delete form uh, routes with, uh, with uh, the URL of, the, of our forms. So now we can use forms for creating and editing our data. Next thing would be like we did with the view builder. We want to display, uh, change how we want to display these options. So we have the way there where we can specify which widget we may want to use. And this is something that you need to define in base field definitions too. And next thing will be listing them. So we already have our data, and we want to list uh, uh, all the all the events that we have in our in our site. Uh, with the Entity API, it's really <coughs> like you can integrate with views really easy. Uh, in a similar way, you just define a, a handler, and Drupal Core already has uh, base classes for doing that. But uh, 
maybe you don't want to use views for whatever, uh, but most uh, admin interface in Drupal 8, it's, it's views now, and you can customize it from the interface. So you can build the administration interface that your end users need. But in case you want to create a listing of your events, you need to define a list builder handler, which uh, in this case I'm saying I'm using a, a, a round class event list builder there. But we can also uh, use the Drupal core uh, list build, entity list builder class. And we need to define uh, the route provider. We can define which route provider we want to use for, for our events. And in our link section, we will uh, create an entry for showing for which route we should list our, all of our, our events. So uh, we had our custom event list builder here. It just stands for entity list builder. And the only, the most relevant methods here are the build header that will show which uh, columns we want to display and the build row, which uh, will show uh, how we want to display this data. In this case, we are showing only the title, which will be converted to a link. Uh, so we show the link to the entity itself and the, and, the, and the label, and the date that we will use a date formatter, and we are formatting that, that data. That's it. So next thing, uh, you, you have uh, your entity already, and you can create it. You, can, you have your forms. You can store your data. So next thing would be that you may want to have different uh, entity types of your events that you want to have different fields on them. So for that, you need to create an, an entity type uh, config uh, class, which is really similar to a content entity. So in this case, we are creating the event type. And we define our IDs and labels for the entity keys. And in this case, like config, uh, you can export it. And you need to identify it with a prefix. So we use the type there. And we say which uh, properties we want to, to export when we move our data with the configuration management system. So we define the ID and the label. And we say that this is a bundle of events. This means that uh, this uh, config uh, entity type is associated with the event uh, entity, content entity type. And for the rest, uh, how you can add your config entities, the forms, the links, and whatever is the same we said before. We said before, and we have uh, the class defined here, and it will extend from config entity base instead of con content entity base. So back to our content entity, we need to define uh, the association with the type. And for that, we need to define the entity key bundle. And uh, we have the bundle entity type uh, uh, annotation and the bundle label. And then we, if we want to uh, associate a field to our custom types, we have the field UI base route where we say which route will be used for, for automatically adding the field UI so you can associate your, your fields to your, to your different uh, event types. So when you, one thing is when you update your field definitions in the base field properties, in the face build, base field definition method, uh, if you have played with the Drupal 8 betas and alphas before it was released, it used to automatically uh, create your schema, or your database schema. And it was inconsistent in some ways, so now it, it's not done anymore. So if you uh, have a site which already has data and you want to add a new field or edit a field, uh, you will have to write a, an, an update process for that. And there are some links here with documentation about how writing those uh, update functions for uh, migrating your, your data from the old structure to the new one. So these are the links to the change records that document how you would uh, do that. So now, we, we any questions so far? 
Okay, so now we have our content entities, and we have uh, different types of them. So now, how, how we can make them translatable? So here I listed two resources. One is the same uh, URL of the, of the training, where you can uh, do everything step by step. I also have another example in GitHub, which uh, provides an entity type for creating it's a, a slider. And there you can find, like, in the, if you do see the git log, you see like, everything is done step by step, so you can follow how this is done. But uh, it's really easy, as we will see. So first thing is we had our, in our content entity type, we had uh, the base uh, table where we were storing our data. Now we want to have, uh, we need to separate the data which is part of the entity itself, like the ID, and the data that we need to translate. So for that we need to define a d d data table which in this case is event field data. It's usually a convention to use this, uh, your entity ID name, and then field data uh, suffix in your tables. And if you added uh, revisions to your entities, you want to, to have a different table for the uh, revision data of your entity properties that are translatable and those that aren't. So we use the same, uh, the same uh, convention. In this case, it's field revision. So this way, Drupal will know where to put the, the columns for the fields that are translatable and not. And this is a step that you usually miss, and then you find out that nothing is working. And so this is a, a step that it's easy to miss. So now we have our entity, and we said where we want to store our data in our database. And the next thing is that we need to add a, pro a field for saving the language our content is in. So we need to add a land code uh, property. And it's a language uh, typed. And you just say uh, the display options for your view and for your form as you would do with any other field. And you create the entity key uh, land code in your, in your content entity app. This, uh, the land code, you usually had to add it uh, when in Drupal 8.0. I think in the Drupal 8.1, this step is not needed anymore. So if you create the land code entity key, it will provide the language automatically for you but in case you need it to customize or whatever, uh, you may want to, to have it here. And then we need to define which, uh, which of our fields we want to translate. So in this case, we have the set translatable uh, method on our, when in our base field definitions. So you just need to call the set translatable true, so this will allow. This is an opt-in thing, so Doing this doesn't mean that our content entity is translatable in our site. It means that the end user can make it translatable. So this uh, will show the our entity types in the, uh, in the content translation settings of our site, so we can check there if we want to translate it or, or not. And when we do this, uh, the content translation module uh, provides the user interface for uh, doing our translations automatically. Uh, but we need to have a default form that uh, the content translation module will look for. So we need to add a new key on, in the form section, which is the default. And we can usually we will provide the same form we use for editing. So this is how you can make your, your content uh, entities, your custom content entities translatable. Next thing, it's the field translat making your fields translatable. And this is uh, the same uh, GitHub uh, URL that I showed before, has, a, has the, the example of how to make your own field, uh, add translatability to your own field step by step. So you can see in the git log, uh, how to do it uh, step by step. 
So if uh, we talk at the start of the talk about the plugin systems that we usually use for a lot of things in Drupal 8, and one of them is how to create your own fields. So plugins are stored in, you should uh, have a, there's a convention about where uh, your plugins are in your code, so you will have your, in your custom module, you will have your source class, your source uh, folder, and then you will have the plugin uh, folder, and then you have different kind of uh, plugins, and uh, each of them, uh, depending on their type, will be stored in a, in a folder, and you will use a, a, nam a namespace, so they are discovered. So in this case, for fields, we, need, we can have formatters, we can have the field type itself and the field widget, and these are, are classes that are, store, that are created in these uh, namespaces. In our case, we are only going to see the field type itself, but the formatters and widgets are uh, quite similar. So I hope the people in the end can see this. So in the case of uh, our fields, it's really similar to our entities. We have an annotation field type when we say the ID of our field. And we have some properties like the label, uh, description, and the category. So when you go to the field UI and you say, I want to add a field to my content entity, you will see uh, categories so you can find them easily. And you define the default widget you want to use and the default formatter you want to use. And how are you using, uh, which class are you using for listing them in, in the case that you have a multi-valued field. And we have uh, base classes on, on core that we can extend. In this example, we are creating a slide field. So what we want to have is, uh, it's like a regular image that we will add some text to it. So we are extending from image item here. And as we had in, in our entities, we had our base uh, property fields here. In our fields, we have the property definitions method and the schema method. So in one case, we are defining uh, the columns where we are saving the data for fields. And in the property definitions, we are saying the types so Drupal knows how to handle our data. In this case, we want to, we call the property definition methods of the image item class. So we just have the field and the alternative title and the title that uh, the image provides. And we just want to add a, an additional property with the text that we want to show in the slide. And in our schema, we do the same. We extend from the schema. We, we call the schema class in the parent class. And we add the slide text column. And we say that this is a varchar uh, and the length of this uh, string. Yeah, so uh, we have another method here. It's the property definitions where we define a Oh, this is the, this is the property definitions uh, method in the base class. So you can see what is done there. So we are creating the alternative text, the title, the width, and the height of the image. And uh, in our, in our uh, child uh, class, we are adding a, a new property. That's it. And in our schema, we will have uh, all our, we will have the, the file ID the alternative text, the title, and we are and the indexes and foreign keys, and we are adding a new, a new column there. That's it. So now, <clears throat> if, you, if, you seen, if you have seen the content entity settings interface, when you configure which, set, which content you want to translate, you can define, uh, in some cases like image, you can define that you want to translate your image, but you only want to, to translate the alternative text and the title but not the file. And we want to have a similar interface or, on our field. We want, to have, uh, we want to be able of selecting which property we want to translate and which not, so we don't translate the file, but we want to translate the slide text that we added. So for that, uh, 
we have something called the columns groups that we can add to our field annotation where we set uh, the default values uh, for, for each of these properties. So in this case, we say that for the alternative text, we want to be translatable by default and for the title and also for the slide text that we added. So this is how you make your fields translatable uh, in Drupal 8. Like anything, everything it's mostly works out of the box in most simple cases so, and even in complex cases, so that's it. <clears throat> for config translation, uh, how do you make your, uh, your config uh, translatable? So the config uh, translation module handles everything here for you. The only thing you need, you, the only thing you need to do is uh, describe your data types in your configuration. And for that, we have the schemas in Drupal core, where we say this metadata about uh, how we store our, our, our data. So in this case, for our event types, we had our IDs and our label. The ID, we say that it's a string, so it won't be translatable. And we will have a label, which is a label type. So this will, uh, the config translation module will know that if we translate our events, we want to translate their labels. And there's a, <clears throat> the documentation for the config schema is in this URL, and there is a cheat sheet there, which contains uh, all the types you can use. So it's a very useful resource to have handy. So isn't this awesome? Like it's really easy to, to make. If you done this with Drupal 7, it was really hard, and Drupal 8, it mostly works out of the box. So another uh, extra thing is that you can build uh, on the top of this. So we at Lingotech, uh, we provide, a, as I said, we provide a translation services, and we integrate with Drupal. So we, what we do is like we extract data of your site, we submit uh, it to our translation platform where your translators can translate it and you get this data back to your site. So in Drupal 7, when we had to support all these uh, different combinations of settings, it was quite hard to add support for stuff. Now with Drupal 8, it's really easy for us like we can translate almost or extract your data and save your translations in almost any country model you can find out there. Like if you use these APIs, we can extract uh, this data easily. And any other uh, integrations, third party integrations, will be really easy to build up on this. So the Lingotech module uh, supports uh, content entity translation, config translation. Uh, we are already supporting everything that we used to support in Drupal 7, which take, took years for Drupal 7. In Drupal 8, it took like months since it was released. And we support most country modules like paragraphs and meta tags. So here, what I'm doing is uh, I'm showing in the top, uh, this is the content language settings in Drupal 8. So you can say that you want to translate your title, your description. So if you use these APIs I showed, uh, any, any external uh, module could use the same data. So in this case, we are saying which data we want to extract and translate with Lingotech. And in the right, in the fields column, we can uh, describe those. And if we use these uh, subfields uh, translati translatability options, we will see them too there. So, and we support any any content entity type that you can any content entity that you create. So this way we can like do uh, translation in bulk and upload or your data and translate it. And yeah. So that was it. Thank you so much for attending. Now, questions, but first, let me thank all the sponsors for hosting us here. Thank you so much. Questions?
So the question is, uh, when you define your field data, you, you have to use the, the typed uh, data API, but you have to define also the schema. And the question is, if you, if is there's, if there is if there is any plan to to remove this schema and just uh, infer it from the definition of the data itself, I don't know about it, but I I can try to answer your question later. You can check for it. But I have no idea. I know that some people is like uh, there's something like in config. Uh, in your config schema, you have type validation, but that's it. And I know there's people here working on having extra validation for your config data too, but not sure if there's plans for for that with fields, for having the inferring the schema from the field. I can look for it. Yeah. So you said that if you add a new base field, yeah. you have to, to write an update. Yeah. Yeah. So the question is, uh, <clears throat> I talked before that if you change your base definitions here, I think, yeah, you have to write your update. Uh, and the question is, uh, there's a command a drash and uh, updates entity updates that does that for you. Yeah, the, the answer is yes. That you can use that for in development. But I'm not sure if you should use it like it tries to infer <coughs> uh, your, your, your schemas from your entity definitions. But I, it's something I, would, I use a lot in development. But in terms of production, I'm not like I won't be that confident to use that. Like you maybe want to really update your data yourself, like, yeah, not sure if it answered your question, but yeah. So when this support was removed from, from Drupal core, it was added to Drash? Like if you are, usually you don't change, or you try to not change your definitions on production, but when you are developing your site, so it's really handy in development. But for productions, I think it makes us some assumptions that you may don't want to so do. So it's that it will try to update all the entities, not only yours. Right, right, and to, yeah. To yeah. Yeah. So he tries to update, like he said that he, try, he tries to update all the entities, not, you cannot say which entities you, you want to update. So. More questions? So if you came with any questions, and find me around, and I'll try to answer. So thank you so much. <laughs>